Well, hey there, YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and lift my glasses up here for now. Because uh, I know you're not really getting to see what I get to see uh, with my glasses on, unfortunately. I can probably use my glasses as a lens to give you a good idea. But you can see the geoengineering effects right here. Look at those layers. I mean, they, they're really whipping out the tech today. See the plane out there in the distance forcing to take off underneath it because there's other planes out there leaving the, the chemtrails, of course. You can really get a good idea of their methods here. See how they layer it up there? I mean, I'm really zooming in there, guys. I'm not quite sure how I'm catching it. But I hope that was a good zoom. Normally, if I zoom in pretty slowly, it'll focus in and out, but focus correctly. But I really wanted to show you how this stuff channels light, okay? Light reflectivity and energy reflectivity, okay? Not just light, not just visible light, but the UV light as well. And, uh... And that could actually play with your eyes. I don't know if people have noticed, but, you know, when we get a reduction in sunlight and they filter out different, uh, would you say, spectrums, uh, then you would get an idea of, of the effect. So, uh, yeah, this stuff definitely filters out different spectrums. But I thought that was a pretty good uh, idea or the way it's looking up there in the sky, so sorry I'm a little distracted here. But what you see being used in conjunction with the chemtrails here, guys, is directed energy. Okay? Uh, earlier there was a rainbow right over my house, and it wasn't a sun dog. Some people say it's a sun dog. No, it was a, it was a bow of some sort that was not related to the sun reflection. Only to what they got in the sky, perhaps. But you can really see the high atmospheric layers up there. You can see the frequency clouds out over in this direction as well. And also the different layering that's going on. I mean, it's funny how I could actually develop a website and have to explain your skies to you guys. I mean, that, that in and of itself should prove to you that there's geoengineering, weather modification, the fact that I have subscribers, the fact that I actually advise other people that are in the same industry as well, uh, you know. So, uh, what the heck is this on the ground? Oh. Oops, sorry guys. <laughs> Picking up something on the ground. What is that? <laughs> but yeah, they whipped out the directed energy to spread the stuff out. Um, stuff is nano sized, even smaller than that, the micron size of um, metallic particles, okay? And they vaporize up there. One gram could spread out to about 80 square meters or something like that. So it doesn't take a lot to cover your skies, and that's what they developed over here, you know, the last 30, 40 years, these compounds that they could actually reliably spray in your atmosphere. You know, because they really wanted to, you know, they want to get it right. But one thing that I wanted to uh, mention, though, when it comes to this, is that, first of all, who are they to determine my blue sky day? That's one thing, okay. Another thing, it's okay, used as a weapon, okay, used for, uh, what would you call sustainable development, uh, used for, uh, altering your mood, even. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because if you get so many sunny days, so many cloudy days, your mood's going to change overall. You're not going to be a very happy person if you're always under a deck of clouds. And uh, and the reason why I mention that is because really, you know, when you look up there and you see a nice clear blue sky, you feel good, you feel great. It's like you're getting closer to God. You know, and w when you got a hazy, 
cloudy, murky day when the sun isn't giving its light and, uh, you know, you just feel like hibernating and going and laying down in bed or something, right? I mean, to that extreme is what, I'm, what I mean to say. And uh, so it's something that, I mean, we've got enough that puts, that is put there to separate us from us, from us and God, you know? And we don't need this as an extra layer of so-called protection, okay? You know, you're, even if it's God's wrath, even if it's God's judgment, I'll, you know, I will take anything coming from God. Whether, you know, whether it be His grace, because if he, he disciplines those He loves. So if they think they need to do this to mitigate your climate, well, your climate's given to you by God, and so you're really interfering with God. If, it, if it's judgment from God, if we have horrible climate, that's judgment from God. It gets God that's made up His mind about that stuff. And so you're kind of getting in the way of that? I don't know. You know, the only way to get away from that is to repent, to stop, you know, if you think you guys need to alter the, uh, the atmosphere, okay, and alter our weather, uh, you know, I really don't think that you have the right, okay, and God will have his way eventually, okay, because, you know, as I watch these guys and I study these guys, uh, what I've noticed is that their technology that they're using right now in your skies can only do so much. In other words, it reaches its maximum potential for their intent. It already has. They're already maxed out on it. They, they, they can't make it any stronger to go against what they're trying to combat. If they think they have a viable reason, either it be God's judgment or blessing, whatever they think it is, but I tell you what, a lot of people will be cursing God in the end times. They'll know it's from God. And your technology will fail you. You know? Your works will be burnt up. Okay? One good way to prove that is funding. You know? Think about it, folks. How much money? And we're going to bail out the Ukraine, you know? My mom was complaining the fact that, you know, she's a retired lady on... on uh, Social Security, she gets food stamps, okay? She can't even get through on their 800 line to get her pin established. So she hasn't been able to use her food stamps for two months because she can't get through on a phone line. No human being on the phone line whatsoever. It's a shot of your moon. Okay? And then she calls up her social worker. Social worker says, call the number. That's, all, that's the best service that she's getting out of our government right now. And they got plenty of money for this. Gosh, look at the way they're layering that up there. It's supposed to have a snowstorm, though, coming in through Tuesday night here in Iowa. So, get ready for the rest of the eastern part of the United States. It's just about two inches, though. No big deal. So, uh, today it was 70 degrees. Beautiful. The grass even started turning green, as you can see here. Melted off, you know, all this ice here. This was four inches of ice. Okay. <laughs> and, uh put up a video about that too so but I just really wanted to come out and spill a little bit of beans here for you guys and and give you guys something to think about you know we're talking about going to a major war and uh, and they're getting ready for us folks and we're not getting ready for them I can tell you that there's another reason why they put this up here folks too is because it makes a great little missile shield okay so they know what's in the what's in the air kind of like spreading flour out and see if somebody walks through it. Well, imagine if you could charge that layer of flour. <laughs> yeah. And they can do it. Okay. Basically, when they are up there doing what they're doing, your, your atmosphere is on fire. Okay. The stuff that they spew out of the back of those planes is vaporizing and is on fire. Okay. That stuff is nothing to play with. Ugh. I mean, this is like Ukraine is nothing to play with. Okay, we shouldn't have gone in there and meddled. Uh, the Ukrainians could have taken care of themselves just fine. They've been dealing with Russia, the Russians. So, any type of revolution uh, within that country, let me tell you what, it's coming from outside. It's not coming from inside the country because none of those people that live there want a riot. None of them want, you know, they, they have their level of freedom. They know what freedom is and they have it. 
Somebody just came in there and decided to muck it up for them and their neighbors, all right? Get all their neighbors pissed off at each other and start another war, like NATO, all right? Because NATO wants a reason to exist, so hey, let's start another European war, all right? Suck some more dollars out of the IMF and uh, the American taxpayer, okay? And so when that money runs out, guess what? This stops. And uh, I also wanted to uh, maybe point out uh, that situation with the WIP facility down in New Mexico, the... Uh, uh, the accident that happened there. Now let me tell you, there's multiple containers that were ruptured and they cannot go down. They cannot go down inside. I don't care what's going on in the servers. You tell me what's going on in the servers and what's being released, I tell you what, they are not going to get underground there. Okay? That's very important for you guys to understand. That means that facility is going to be useless. Okay? And that means our navies will grind to a halt. There's not too many places on the planet where fuel of this nature can be uh, processed. Uh, so, uh, we had that problem over at Paducah, Kentucky, uh, last year, I think it was in November, where it was hit with a tornado. Okay, there was very few places we'll take this stuff and process this stuff, okay? What, is Japan now? Might as well just use Japan? I mean, come on. Uh, so that means the navies will grind to a halt. They run on nuclear reactors, okay? And Japan and, and, uh, China don't, actually. They got some nuclear subs, but they also have a lot of diesels. So they're kind of like looking in the future, you know, because uh, how do you turn that stuff into gold? You know, you make it hard to handle and only certain people in certain areas can handle it. And all those places are now um, out of commission. As far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't be bringing any more fuel into either Paducah or down in New Mexico or any other waste facility for that matter until procedures and everything have been reviewed and, you know, <laughs> It's one thing about getting a release, but it's another thing not being able to go down inside because it's so hot that they can't fix the problem. And they're doing nothing to ensure that there's not an explosion down there of those nasty gases. So please, uh, Potter Blog, uh, P-O-T-R blog dot com. He's out there on YouTube. Uh, you know, he's got some good info down. He's paying really close attention to that as well. Um, and I have been too. And, uh, and we're talking about a 30-minute release of plutonium, okay? So it was a cloud that came out, and uh, you guys need to be aware of that, too. That there is a situation down there, and it's sitting on top of a huge caverns, a uh, pressurized uh, uh, brine, okay? So, uh, you know, I think it just blows sky high with just the pressurization of that brine coming up. And uh, it flowed for three days, or four days when they drilled down a mile away from it and that stuff bursted up out of the ground and flowed for four days now imagine you know those places down there being flooded you know there's places designed not to have a release for 10,000 years being sealed well guess what man you can't go down there now boy these clouds are just wickedly wild see those out there too Like I said, they're really whipping out the tech. So I just wanted to come out and just give you a good example. Spend a little time so you can see the sky change over that period of time. See the frequency clouds above the deck there, so those multiple layers there. You know, get a weatherman to explain those clouds, you know. Our, our channels out here, they say, oh, send us your photos, right? But they won't take these ones. <laughs> yeah. Because then they'll have to explain, hey, what's going on with this stuff, huh? Look how it just darkens the whole sun, that cloud. Okay, folks? And if you take off, if I took off my sunglasses, you wouldn't even see the cloud there. Okay? Capturing this on, on film here for you. You wouldn't even know that cloud was there unless I had it on film. I guess you look at it without glasses or with my glasses, whatever. I'm just able to see this stuff because I have my sunglasses on. So I really hope my, my camera's capturing that effect there that they're doing. You see the shadows that they're all cast. How does, how does a shadow come out of the sun? <laughs> I mean, really, folks. I understand about, you know, nucle nucleation of clouds and formation of clouds. and. <laughs> This is why I'm having to point this out. I mean, this is just incredible. And uh, China will take you by surprise too, guys. Just FYI. China likes to take people by surprise. 
you know, calling your congressman and all that. You know, Obama's just going to take this nation right into the pit, guys. I mean, calling your congressman, your senators, all that isn't going to do us any more good. Sorry to say. We're just going to have to let it all play out and not make the same mistake twice. Remember that, folks. We are not going to make the same mistake twice. Let's not, you know, show up for the voting, you know. And these people that try to put up before us, uh-uh, no more. I don't go vote. I don't be a part of it. Have it. Okay. Burn that voter card, being part of that B system. Sorry, but that's not where I look for my solutions from our government, okay? I look for my Lord Jesus Christ, His Word. He'll guide me. Not Uncle Sam, not the government. Okay, we don't collect any benefits here. You know, I'm not, not to say that about other people that need it. Okay. You know, I could use a few bucks, man. Look, look at my house, okay? I could use a few bucks, but I don't. So, uh, you know, I do live fairly comfortably, though. My bills are, are uh, pretty low, and that's the way I do it. I pay for everything with cash. You know, it's the only way to do it and stay debt free. You know, I don't have a mortgage payment. And I, you know, we own three lots and two houses, and and all our cars are paid off. And uh, we just stay out of that big time debt. You know, it's the new rich of the new millennium is to avoid the bankers. Do that, and you will survive, folks. Love y'all. Take care.